There is, of course, an element of risk to a flight such as this, and it's uh, easy to forget that when you find yourself joking over something like an early morning birthday party. But the astronauts uh, are encouraged, when they think about the risk, about how well Columbia performed in its first flight, the maiden voyage, last April. How they are about to fly a used spacecraft for a second time, uh, well, I should say, uh, how they're about to fly a used spacecraft for the first time, second flight, is something they'll be thinking about between now and uh, 10 o'clock takeoff time. Mort Dean talked about that with the astronauts and with their wives. Car or used vehicle? Sure do. You bet. And I think for the very reason that you pointed out, John and Crip uh, uh, demonstrated to all of us that, that the basic performance of all of the systems and the subsystems, uh, including the tile, uh, were very sound. The design is very sound. And uh, for the most part, all the systems uh, performed as well, and in many, most cases, performed better than anticipated in their flight. So, so there's no worry about flying what some people have referred to as a used car or a used truck. No. It's like uh, the old ad, isn't it? Uh, flown only once? Uh, well, I think it's it's uh, maybe uh, a little like taking a car that uh, is built to, to run for a couple hundred thousand miles. Uh, perhaps you're a little more uh, apprehensive about the first time you take it out in case something was overlooked. Once it's been driven around once and you get the bugs out of it, uh, then you have more confidence in it. Uh, and, and that's kind of the state that we're in with the shuttle. It's built to fly 100 flights, and uh, we're on the second flight. We know that it's, the systems are going to work now. Is it uh, a scary prospect for you or because of his record-breaking flights in the X-15 and having been to space before? Is it something that you're just accepting as a matter of course? I think so. Um, I, I'm not scared, no. Um, I know that when that, uh, when the launch pad is there and I'm standing there watching it lift off, I will be as excited as anybody else, and I'm sure my heart will beat as fast as anybody else's, but uh, not out of fear, but really out of excitement. You're glad it's about to happen, and would you be glad in a sense when it's over? Uh, well, I yes, in that, you know, you've prepared for so long that uh, you'll be anxious that, that everything goes as smoothly as it did the last flight, and that they accomplish all the things that they wanted to do, and that, um, you know, it just builds the groundwork for what comes later, and you're just anxious to see these things happen. Cody and I have, uh, you know, sure, we've talked about, you know, the possibilities of danger in my job, and it's, and, uh, it's something that uh, is a part of it. Nobody can deny it. Uh, but frankly, uh, in both aviation and in, in the space flight business, I, uh, I wouldn't go on this flight if I was afraid. And uh, I, I really don't know what Cody thinks about it, but I don't think she's scared either. I, uh, it has its dangers, but, but uh, we prepare ourselves as much as we can. We're comfortable with ourselves. We are absolutely confident that the shuttle is safe. Uh, if we weren't, I wouldn't fly. So uh, I'm comfortable. Cody? I feel the same way. I'm, uh, I tend to be a, a realist. And I realize that there there are dangers involved in you know in any job, and in this job, just like there is a danger in you getting in your car and driving to work, um, it's something that you have to you have to realize and you have to accept, and you don't sit around and worry about it. CBS News correspondent Morton Dean with the astronauts and their wives talking about risk. Dawn breaking over the Kennedy Space Center along the shores of the Indian River in northern Florida. We showed you those beautiful photographs of the moon a short while ago. Now dawn begins to break. There's the countdown clock. Keep in mind that a number of holes are also built into the time between now and the expected launch at 10 a.m. Eastern time this morning. The countdown clock uh, out there just as dawn begins to break. In front of that clock already the stands, the viewing stands, about three and a half miles away are beginning to uh, fill up with various dignitaries. We saw uh, Senator Schmidt from New Mexico, the former astronaut, he's out here this morning. The rocket itself, uh, the launch pad, is about three and a half miles away from the countdown clock and where we are. We're right in front of the countdown clock. Three and a half miles is as close as we can get this morning to the launch site. 
you can see that uh, it's beginning to get light rather quickly now as the Space Shuttle Columbia is on the pad, nearly ready to go. Our CBS News coverage of the launch of Space Shuttle Columbia after this pause for station identification. And for those of you just getting up and just joining us, good morning to those of you who've been with us for the uh, past half hour. On we go. The Space Shuttle Columbia poised at the launch pad. Everything uh, seems to be in order now. They did fly in the uh, two black boxes from California to um, replace uh, the one box that was giving uh, some difficulty in the electronic system, the very complicated uh, system of computers and electronics necessary to get this uh, spacecraft into orbit. And they were flown in, the two black boxes, one of them put in, one for additional backup. Two of them flown in last night from California. The one box was uh, put in to replace the one that had been giving some difficulty. It's a box about the size of a, of a bread basket, and there are an estimated 300 such boxes uh, aboard the spacecraft. This one began working almost immediately. The countdown was resumed. The countdown since that time has been uh, right on schedule. And so the Columbia has, uh, is being fueled for the hopefully mid-morning launch today. It's a feverish high drama repair job uh, has been completed and now the fueling operation is going along as scheduled. We're just about to enter a, a hold. You saw the countdown clock a few minutes ago, the countdown clock running, but uh, we're just about to enter a one hour hold that uh, built in to the countdown. The crew, having uh, finished breakfast, will uh, very soon be suiting up and as a matter of fact, uh, probably entering the suit up room right now. The central last line message uh, for the moment is that everything appears to be in order, the countdown proceeding uh, right on schedule and near perfectly for hopefully a launch about uh, three hours and 28 or 29 minutes from now. Let me say now, as I'm joined again by uh, Walter Cronkite, that Walter, uh, the, the NASA officials seemed to make a point last night of saying about 10 a.m. They didn't want to get hooked up on, we are not trying to make it to the second 10 a.m. Eastern time this morning, but about 10 a.m. That's well, as good as Amtrak does. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amtrak has gotten better, like a lot of things <laughs> in the country. It's, it, it has gotten better. Walter, we were talking, uh, mentioning earlier, the fact that the Soviet Union has had 100 launches. Last year, they had 100 launches. Uh, we don't have nearly as many launches, and one of the reasons is that their space uh, equipment out there in space tends to wear out in a matter of weeks. Let me pause and say that the voice of NASA is just about to uh, speak up, so this let's take a listen to that. control, T-minus two hours, seven minutes, and counting. Preparations to hold the countdown clock at the T-minus two hour and five minute point have been completed. The liquid oxygen ta topping to 100% is complete and we are starting the replenish mode to replace the boil off up two seconds away from launch. At the present time, we have heard no uh, indication that the flight crew has not gotten a go-ahead uh, to proceed with the suiting. At the present time, they are still in the breakfast room, but should be moving down to the suiting room in just a short time from now. The Mila tracking site at Merritt Island is in the process of uh, doing a check to determine whether they have a problem with locking on to one of the uh, signals from the orbiter or not. At the present time, they believe that it is caused by the fact that the uh, system on board the orbiter is on low power, and they've asked that it be turned on high power to assure that they do have the proper lock. However, this is not considered a uh, a major problem at the uh, the present time. Uh, we're coming up on the T-minus two hour, five minute hold point. Uh, during this hold, the frost evaluation team will inspect the external tank for any frost buildup, which might, uh, any ice uh, could possibly damage the orbital thermal protection system during a launch if it were to come off. We have had a go for the flight crew to uh, go into the suiting room and uh, suit up for their trip out to the pad and into uh, orbit for five days. Coming up on the hold point, T-minus two hours, five minutes, and holding. This is a one-hour build-in hold. This is the last of the long holds in the countdown. 
as we prepare for a liftoff at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time this morning. Everything has gone very, very smoothly in the countdown. Just a few minor concerns, and those have been taken care of uh, very expeditiously as we have gone along. At the present time, uh, our only major concern is the weather. Uh, not the weather here at the Kennedy Space Center, but at the site such as the Edwards Air Force Base site, which would be used in the case of a contingency which required a once-around abort mode. We have uh, capability of several types of abort modes, uh, if it is necessary, including a return to the launch site here at the Kennedy Space Center. The weather for that, uh, for the liftoff and for the return, is satisfactory at the present time. Uh, weather is being monitored around the world uh, to determine that we have the proper conditions for the mission this morning.